Hello everybody. My name is Marcelo Vignali. I was drawing in my sketchbook and I ran into a problem. And this problem is one of the problems that actually happens fairly often, more often than I'd like. And that's the ink blot, the spill, that the drawing spills from one page to the other. And typically, I have a blotter page. This blotter page fits behind the sheet of paper that I'm drawing on so that the ink, when it soaks through, because I like to saturate my inks, it's absorbed and it doesn't ruin the drawing that's behind the, uh, you know, one page to the next. But in this particular case, I had this uh, orange that bled through from one part of the drawing, the, pre the pre preceding drawing, and it ruined the drawing that I was planning to do. Uh, so I realized that I had to try and work around that. And that's uh, sometimes one of the neat things about you know, working in a sketchbook and not necessarily working in a computer is that sometimes you're dealt with adversity and you have to try and figure out a way to fix that and then make that work. I think that sometimes when we work on a computer, the, the computer always affords us a, a, the ability to go back, to go ahead and uh, make some of these decisions or bad decisions or mistakes that simply go away. But that isn't necessarily the right thing because what you want sometimes is a little bit of exploration. Sometimes you stumble across something that you didn't uh, expect. Sometimes you can hide something. Sometimes you can work with something. So it gives you different challenges that you're not going to have if you're working on the computer. So that's why I recommend drawing uh, in a sketchbook and working from a sketchbook. And part of the reason why you want to work in a sketchbook is how uh, it is incredibly vital and important to learn how to design. You can see the drawing that I have here. I'm using my fractal method, and this is a method that I've been developing over the years that I discovered while I was doing figure drawing. And over the process of while I was doing my figure drawing, I started to understand purpose, uh, why we do figure drawing, why it's important uh, to continue this training. Even though I've been working in animation for several years and I'd already been well respected uh, within the industry, the fact that I was going to these figure drawing workshops and continued to learn and continuing to grow was a valuable process, but also not just training to do the figure drawing for the sake of doing figure drawing. No, I found that at first, you know, my, my instincts were that I wanted to learn how to draw the figure and I wanted to learn how to draw the figure effectively. I wanted to learn how to draw the anatomy. And I kept pouring all of this attention and all of this effort into the anatomy and understanding the structure and I have to admit that it didn't necessarily make my drawings that much better. I remember sitting next to someone who's an absolutely brilliant artist, is a, more than that, a brilliant designer. And while I was sitting next to them, I, I knew that I knew more. I had built a model in, in my spare time uh, in order to study the anatomy. And I draped muscles over it in clay and so that I would understand, you know, intricacies of all the different muscles. But when it came right down to it, my drawing was not better than his drawing. My drawing looked worse. And I thought, how can this be? If I have all the lumps and bumps, I have all the muscles exactly where they need to be, why is it that my drawing doesn't look good? And so it was one of those moments of reflection where I had to go and try to figure out where the problem was, because if the solution had always been, well, to learn the anatomy and to learn it so well that I will do good drawings, that, that plan wasn't going to work, that I had to sort of change course. And I think it's a, it's a testament to when you're working and you want to be a better artist, that you have to have a really sober assessment of yourself. You have to be able to look at yourself objectively and realize what it is that you want to do with your art. It isn't so much that, it, you know, the, um, 
you just plot a course and or you don't even plot a course you just sort of plod through your career and, and good things are going to happen no you have to kind of plan for where it is that you want to be and if you realize that you're not getting there that you have to be able to make the course adjustments uh, so that you can reach your goal I'm, I'm very much goal oriented I think that if you want something you have to set that as your goal you have to verbalize it. You have to make a definite statement about what it is that you want. And in this case here, I certainly wanted to be a better artist. I wanted to be a better designer. And I understood that there was a difference. And that's where I came up with the fractal method. And you can see the, in this underdrawing that there is a system that I have been developing. And, it, and it, go, it started in figure drawing, but it's not exclusive to figure drawing. But it's a process that I've been assembling over these past years and I've been really fortunate in that uh, I've hooked up with Bobby Chu and Bobby has allowed me to travel with the, the group of artists uh, that are going around the world and sharing uh, some of the things that they've learned and some of the things that uh, have been beneficial for my career and I'm trying to do exactly that to share with people what it is I've been able to glean over these several years working in the industry and trying to become a not only a better artist but a better designer and I also understand the, the importance not only of you know having a system by which to train and having the appropriate system by which to train but also having the training become an important part of it look it's got to be fun if it's not fun you're not going to do it and that's why I have this sketch club that I've developed and in the sketch club I get together with friends and we go and we have a wonderful time we uh, sit and draw the tools that I'm using right here these are the exact tools that I would be using when I go out and do my drawing whether it's coffee shop drawing or whether I'm going to the uh, my Friday restaurant with my friends and we uh, hang out and we get the sketch and this is a, our sketch club all of these things are, are vitally important to me, not only because it's something that I set a goal for, you know, to be a better designer, but also to remind myself why I do what I do. I think sometimes when we're working in the industry, we start thinking that, uh, oh, well, I'm, I'm a professional, I already know what it is that I need to know, and you only work... Uh, when you're uh, being paid. I had the unfortunate uh, opportunity to actually hear those words being uttered by a, a friend of mine uh, years ago, and he had made that comment, and I realized that this particular person had uh, had stopped growing and stopped loving what it is that they do, and I, and I vowed at that moment that I would never be like that person, and I always try to keep that spark alive for what it is that I love to do and I, I'm not going to let anyone take that away and I think I've been successful in being able to preserve that uh, but but I really think it's important to go ahead and train and create an environment where it's fun to train look if it's not fun you're not going to do it so you have to find a way to make it fun not everybody's going to want to you know go out and do figure drawing and not everybody's going to want to go out and do sketchbook drawing perhaps it's landscape painting Perhaps it's doing some sort of a craft, but, the, but that is artistic. All of those things are valid, and all of those things have a, a purpose in the process, this creative process that, uh, that we're trying to cultivate as, uh, as working professionals, to so try and maintain that creativity that has been so important and so vital to our lives at the same time that we're able to do the training that we need to do in our lives. In this drawing, I've, you can see that I have a, this uh, blocked out system. It's exactly the same system that I use in figure drawing. It doesn't matter if I'm drawing a figure. It doesn't matter if I'm drawing an animation character. And it also doesn't matter if I'm drawing a background. The design principle is always the same. Good design. And good design has a system and it has an order and that's what the fractal method this method that I've been putting together that is what the fractal method uh, has 
uh, in it. That that's the that is what the system is all about. I think another thing that is also uh, pretty fun is to try different things. You know, don't don't simply stick to one thing. You can see here that uh, I have. have I actually have this uh, a color pencil box that was given to me uh, by the a group uh, at Schoolism, and I've been carrying it along looking for an opportunity to go ahead and, and have some fun and go ahead and experiment. You can see that I'm trying to find ways to uh, bring some, even my little sketches here, make them uh, even you know, communicate more effectively. Uh, as the ink begins to dry, I begin to make uh, assessments and make judgments about, you know, whether the value isn't strong enough. Sometimes the ink continues to soak into the paper, and I have to run it through a second pass in order to make sure that the ink stays uh, dark and there is a high contrast in the drawing. Uh, I uh, and and so as you lay it in, the paper continues to absorb, and then eventually you put the drawing together and you make the necessary adjustments and you end up with a final drawing. And this is a character drawing using the same method I use for my figure drawings. Well, I hope that you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.